corn farmers in multiple states, including Iowa and Illinois, the country's top two producers, are battling rootworm resistance. Now, the University of Nebraska-Lincoln has documented a shift in susceptibility to rootworms that could cause problems for the state's growers. UNL Extension entomologist Bob Wright joined us Wednesday to explain why research has shown the need for crop rotation, different BT varieties, and alternate control methods may be necessary to manage the western corn rootworm. We've been doing research in Nebraska for the last couple of years, primarily led by Dr. Lance Mikey in our department, and we've been able to document similar results to what they've seen in Iowa and Illinois. There currently are four different BT proteins that are incorporated into hybrids that are effective against rootworms, and we're seeing two of those, some evidence of resistance or reduced susceptibility in those other states as well as Nebraska now. In Nebraska, where are the documented problems at in the state and under what conditions? Okay, well, the, so far we've only done studies in northeast Nebraska mm -hmm. and southwest Nebraska, but we're getting reports also in parts of central Nebraska. But uh, typically in all, these, all the states in the Midwest where we're seeing this, it's where people have been growing the same type of BT hybrid for three or more years in a row, corn after corn. That's sort of the minimum conditions uh, where we start seeing resistance develop in some areas. And what are you seeing in either those fields or in the trials you're doing? Well, basically, uh, we're seeing reduced susceptibility, so that means higher survival and more damage than we've seen in the past on the, the traded uh, rootworm hybrids. And so there's an interaction between the density of rootworms and the susceptibility. If you don't have too many rootworms, you may not notice a, a change but we've had you know, increasing numbers of rootworms in a lot of fields the last several years because we're growing more continuous corn. So a combination of high densities of rootworms and reduced susceptibility, you're probably gonna see increased injury if you have a problem. Specifically, what were the proteins that showed susceptibility in these traits? Okay, it gets pretty complicated. There is a publication called the, the BT Trait Table that uh, people can look up on the internet, but there's two proteins that have been a problem, the CRY, 3BB1 protein, which was originally marketed by Monsanto, and the Syngenta's AgriSure rootworm protein, the M, which is called MCRY3A. Those are the two that have been showing up having problems. There's the other, other couple of proteins, the Herculex rootworm protein that Dow and Pioneer developed is working well across the Midwest. And then Syngenta just released a new uh, type of hybrid this year called Duracade, which has a totally different type of protein uh, we don't have a lot of field experience with it yet, but there's no reports of that having problems. Uh, you mentioned that this is uh, usually seen in continuous corn situations where even three to six, maybe even more years of continuous corn on corn. Short term and long term, what are not only the yield impacts, but uh, the impacts to the field itself? Well, again, if, if we're having less susceptibility to the, the BT proteins, the, the larvae will survive at higher levels and cause more damage, so you may see more lodging or yield loss uh, from the rootworm feeding. Uh, the other issue is that people are seeing more beetles in fields, and uh, in some cases they may have to spray for uh, silk clipping concerns. In terms of solutions, the, the number one recommendation is crop rotation that works very well in Nebraska. Uh, crop rotation with soybeans or other broadleaf plants which are not hosts for the rootworms. Uh, some people are also going back to soil insecticides that can help, or planting time yeah. insecticides, but uh, rotation is probably the best recommendation. And switching from different BT varieties as well? Right. Uh, either go to a hybrid that has a different type of BT protein, or there are several options now with hybrids that have two different rootworm active proteins, and those are working well uh, as well in our testing. Bob mentioned a BT trait table during the interview. We'll link to that information on the Market Journal homepage.